Thank you so much, um, Esther. Thank you so much um, to you and your team at um, People Matters for giving me this opportunity um, to be able to speak here today. It does seem, um, well, a little, a little bit foreign to me to be able to be um, a, you know, a cricketer for such a long period of time and coming to a um, you know, big HR um, fraternity conference. So um, it's really a pleasure to be here and it's something that um, the HR component and the human resource understanding in and around um, the world in general, not just business or sport, is something that absolutely fascinates me. So thanks again for this opportunity. So I've been asked to be able to talk um, today about, about technology, um, and especially in cricket, and be able to have that, the chance to be able to reflect on how things have really evolved from the first time really I first started playing cricket in um, like a develop, developmental squad at the age of 15, to then where technology is today, and then also the thought of where technology is going to be in, say, you know, in 15 years' time. And I can really break it down to a few key components. One is the skills, the skill development component, mental skills, the, the physical skills, which is always being pushed to the limit. Also the inclusion of technology in the game of cricket, the DRS, um, the third umpire, which I'll talk about my experiences about that um, later on. <laughs> good and not so good experiences. Um, then also the technology that's involved in the viewer's experience, sitting at home watching the game. That's changed so dramatically since the first time that I started watching cricket. But let me start with the, the use of technology in the development of skills. And that started for me when I was, when I was 15. Dennis Lilly, the great Australian fast bowler, used to come around different parts of Australia to be able to work with the next, next level um, of up coming fast bowlers. And back then, what would happen is Dennis Lilly would just see and, and video on the old, old school videotape to be able to see the young fast bowlers go through, go through, their, t um, through their paces, and then work through with the pause and fast forward and rewind to be able to actually work through the technique of bowling. And because my technique from a young age, from the age of 12, I had stress fractures in my back, which ultimately came down to my technique being very poor. So to be able to have that then with the old, with the old school, which still worked, with, which worked really well and had, the, had a great effect, to now how things have changed, to now having an app on your phone where you can take immediate footage which you can slow, slow it right down with still full clarity on every step of the process, every frame, to then being able to look at it immediately, and then also being able to, via the app, send that information directly through to your coach, which could be on the other side of the world. It's absolutely fascinating to see how quickly, in 20 years, how quickly things have changed. And of course, it's for the betterment, but also, it just, it's evolved with how society's evolved. Everything is so instant now and everyone expects things to be so instant. The second component is the physical, the physical aspect, the physical development, the technology that's come into play there. And we see it, we see it now, you might not be aware, but if you watch the Australian cricket team run around and go onto the field, <clears throat> they've got a little bump on the back of their neck which is actually a little GPS unit. And the GPS unit is put in there to be able to track so many, so many different aspects of data, whether it's how, how many kilometres or how many metres you've covered throughout a day of, say, and during a test match, how, how much of those kilometres you've actually, you've been sprinting or you've been jogging or you've been walking. But then also the impact and the forces that are actually going through Every step, of, every step of the way. So a fast bowler, how much force is actually going through, through the crease? So, and also the other one is, for a fast bowler, your run-up speed, your exact run-up speed every single ball, which is an incredible tool to be able to use when you're actually going back and training and repli trying to replicate that at training, say in the lead up to um, another series after having a big break, 
So you can actually specifically work out, well, when I'm bowling at my best, my run-up speed is this. When I'm bowling in a, in a game, the, the force at the crease on my body, on my back, on my, um, on my ankles is this force. So you can actually get a gauge even at training because you also wear the GPS unit at training and get that immediate feedback of exactly how you're training, what intensity you're training at. So it's quite hard now to be able to take a little shortcut or go, you know, I actually really put in today, but they actually see the data and go, um, no, no, you didn't. <laughs> so it's pretty hard to hide nowadays. Um, the, other, the other fascinating um, development technology which um, I got exposed to a couple of years ago was there's technology out there now which is a headset that actually stimulates a certain part of your brain, the, um, the, motor, the motor cortex, to be able to actually open up the neural pathways so then when you're actually developing in your skill, skill um, development phase, to be able to actually pick the skill up quicker because all your neural pathways are open to be able to actually pick that up, pick that skill up a lot quicker. So the, the old school, what everyone talked about is the 10,000 hours to become a master in a certain skill. There's actually ways now, and the, and the science and the actual research around it is very strong to show there's actually ways to be able to speed up that skill development. There's no, there's never, um, there's never a way to be able to actually take a shortcut. There's only such thing as you know, blood, sweat and tears to be able to actually develop skills. But imagine being able to develop a skill from a young age at a faster rate. Imagine what that's actually going to mean in 15, 20 years time when, when younger people are able to do incredible things that someone at my age, at this stage in my career, career can do it, you know, can do it 15 or 16. And this comes back to the old school way of doing things which so, so many of us who um, the a little bit older in your profession always go back and look back to actually what, what worked for you. And what worked for you in the development phase especially was without, with, was without technology. And for me a, a perfect example of that is there was an tr incredibly tragic event that happened um, a few years ago on a cricket field when Phil Hughes um, got hit by, by a bouncer from Sean Abbott that um, unfortunately killed him instantly. And no matter how much technology is around to be able to help someone really try and get through that from a mental aspect especially, it's the old school ways that helped me navigate my way through that. And for me that was eight months of spy my performance is spiralling out of control to going from knowing what I can do performing on the, the international stage to performing nowhere near how I knew I could, to being dropped um, after the first Ashes test in 2015, knowing that every time I went out to bat, one of my greatest strengths, which was facing fast bowling, was, was my biggest weakness, because every time I went out to bat, I thought that a fast bowler was going to bowl that ball that actually was going to have that same impact on me. And what was I going to be leaving behind, my young family and everything that actually you know, Phil Hughes and his family sadly, tragically, have had to deal with. Which moved me on to trying to find someone, whether it's technology, whether it's actually old school methodologies, to be able to help me either turn things around for, for the betterment and hopefully a, a, a few more years of playing, or maybe I just had to retire and use that information potentially to be able to pass it on to the next generation of cricketers. So a chance meeting with a, with a performance coach from, from the US. It's amazing how people just enter your life at certain times when, when you're open and willing. And this, this guy has had 45 years experience in working with high performance people who, if they made a mistake, and they weren't concentrating or weren't on at that right moment in time, that it can be the difference between life and death. IndyCar drivers, NASCAR drivers, F1, especially back in the day when it wasn't that safe, fighter pilots, special forces, those types of people. And it fascinated me to be able to understand the old school methodology to be able to how to get the best out of your mind. And also understanding intimately when you actually you start to go the other way 
and you actually sabotage your own performance. And this is now part of my, my next journey and the next exciting journey for me in my life outside of my, my playing days to be able to intimately realise that some of the old school methods can have a, such a huge impact and understanding what high performance looks like. So for me going from my, my performance is spiralling out of control to being dropped from test cricket from the one day team to then actually coming up the other side once I really understood the mental skills that are required for you to actually bring your best performance as consistently as you possibly can to culminating in one of my best innings that I've ever actually played which was only a couple of months ago for, for Chennai in the final um, in Mumbai against um, the Sunrisers. So to be able to understand what the mental skills are required of your best performance means that when things aren't go when your performance aren't exactly what you want, you've got a real strong benchmark to be able to come back to to bring your best performance to every single aspect of your life or your performance, which is part of what Esther touched on with Beyond and what I've um, set up over the last 12 months with with Ian Thorpe, who's Australia's most decorated Olympic athlete. He's won five gold medals um, in swimming, broken over 40 world records throughout his illustrious career. And also Jacques Delaire, Dr Jacques Delaire, who's the performance coach, who's got these old school methodologies without the technology to be able to actually help people bring their best performance every single time and how powerful that is. But going on to the technology, technology that was introduced halfway through my career, which I didn't particularly handle well, was the DRS system. If people know what the DRS system is. <laughs> a gr growing up as a cricketer, you always had to accept the umpire's decision. And especially when it wasn't a great decision that you thought wasn't, was, wasn't a good decision at all, you had to accept it. You had to put on a brave face and, and walk off. And then when technology comes in to be able to actually question the umpire's decision, nicely, it actually, it, it made me come undone. There was times, and I remember it like as yesterday during an Ashes series in, 20, in 2013, that I, there was a few times where I definitely thought it didn't feel, and especially LBW, which in test matches was one of my biggest problems, I thought that's definitely not out. And then because I didn't, understand, I didn't really contemplate and, and actually process the nuances of what actually not out means, whether that's it's just missing the stump or it's just hitting the stump, not just maybe that it actually doesn't feel out. And all the ramifications that actually came with that, the, especially with um, social media just starting to crank up at that point in time. Lucky I didn't read a lot of the um, things that were, <laughs> that were actually said about my use of the DRS technology. But it made me realise and... And also, just recently, um, MS Dhoni made me realise what you actually use the DRS technology for. Which is, if it's an absolutely horrendous decision, it's not close at all, it's definitely either out or not out, and that's it. And MS Dhoni, of course, is incredibly calm, incre doesn't let his emotions take over any situation of, um, of any aspect of not just his cricket, but his life as well. So he, he helped me actually understand that maybe I, needed to, maybe I needed to take that emotion out of it, especially in 2013, I might not have had as many, um, many issues. Then the technology that I think about when I first started watching cricket was there was only, there was a few cameras. There was, um, I remember even watching like the, the run outs when there was a run out opportunity, when there was, no, there was no third umpire at that stage where even for the t television to be able to actually try and slow it down to see whether it was out or not, the frames, it, was, it seemed like the batsman had run three metres in between frames. <laughs> Compared to the technology now that people sitting in their own house, it, it's a better experience. You actually, you're able to hear players on the field talk to the, the people who are watching the game about what's going on in the game right now, talking about tactics that, that are happening, what, what the plans are for this type of this certain batsman, or batsmen actually talking about what, they, what they're trying to do, how they're trying to take on certain bowlers. It's fascinating. You can't get that access 
at actually going and sitting at the ground, of course you're taking the incredible atmosphere that you can't replicate at home, but to be able to actually really dive inside exactly what's going on at that point in time, it's pretty, it's pretty fascinating to see where it's gone. And now with the future, and I see the future being with virtual reality technology coming in that's being developed. Imagine sitting in, imagine sitting in, your, in your lounge room and putting on a set of virtual reality goggles and actually feeling and seeing with your own eyes the batsman that's actually batting at that moment in time in uh, a World Cup final between India and Pakistan. <laughs> imagine that. <laughs> and been able to actually feel and see exactly what's coming down from, uh, from Virat's Kohli's, what's come, what he can actually see himself. And then from a bowler running into bowl. Been, uh, imagine being able to actually put yourself in his shoes of Bhuvanesh Kumar running into bowl, trying to execute the perfect Yorker right at the end of a, a World Cup final. You can't imagine how incredible that and exhilarating that experience will be. And that's where it's going to be incredibly interesting to see then how the mixture between that viewer experience at home but then also people coming along and watching the game as well because there's no question you can't replicate the atmosphere no matter how much you turn your TV up and the speakers up in your, in your, in your lounge room to what you actually feel and sense with 60,000 people or 70,000 people at Eden Gardens um, cheering, cheering um, the team on. The, the last thing that I find fascinating about technology, but also the reason why this conference is here today, and has been for the last week about HR. And the one thing that I know, I know intimately, is that cricket really needs to learn from what business does when it comes to, to HR, and, sp and sport in general. Because the one thing, being a cricketer, is if you're not performing, there's not really a heap of investment in, especially from a health and wellness aspect, and from a mental skills aspect. It's more so around the coaches and the technical aspect of what you're doing. Compared to what there is in the investment in HR, in and around every, just about every corporate organisation in the world, the amount of money that's actually spend, spent on people within an organisation compared to a cricketer who's not performing that well, ends up getting dropped. Then the team ends up just trying to, you know, they're just trying to unearth the next star and the person that's just been dropped has got to try and sort the, <laughs> the rest of their life out and whatever that means. For a cricketer, that means not play, maybe not playing anymore, having to transition into the next, the next stage of, of your life, which is a, is a huge challenge. And I've seen so many of my, of my close friends who have struggled with that transition. Because at 30, well, if you're 35, 36, 33, whatever the age is that you're fortunate enough to play to, all you've known is mainly one, is one thing, which has been sport and cricket. Of course, some people are educated, and that's one thing that um, India does incredibly well, is making sure that education is such an integral part of growing up, but in Australia, education, there's a lot of cricketers actually are playing, have played and are playing now who dropped out of school at the age of 15 or 16. So then to be able to actually tran um, transition into the next stage, next stage of your life is incredibly challenging. What, what's my new purpose? What are my skills? Whereas in business and the HR development is always upskilling people to be able to actually allow them to be able to manoeuvre into at different aspects of an organisation. And that's one huge thing that cricket from my own experience certainly needs to take a huge leaf out of the business world in that regard to be able to make sure that people are supported. And it's not just for their peak performance, but most importantly it's their health and general wellness, which is obviously a huge problem in today's society. But the one thing that I know the business world can take out of, out of sport and out of cricket is the consistent high, high performance aspect. And the one thing about, that I intimately know is 
every time you go out to play, you're, ex you're exposed to the world every time you go out to play. And in an IPL season, that might, be si that, 16, that might be 16 games if you make it through to the final. And every single time you go out to play, you're exposed to over a billion people and their thoughts and opinions on how, how well you're going. So that means that you actually, you're challenging high performance and what, the, what you actually bring, what's inside of you, whether it's, whether it's a skill development that you need to actually work on, whether it's a weakness I need to work on, whether it's, for me, my physical, my physical aspect, which I had a lot of injuries, do I actually want to be seen in front of a billion people walking off the field because I've strained my hamstring again? Or, like happened in the IPL final, I faced 10 balls and haven't scored a run, and people's thoughts on what the hell is he doing, and also mine at the same time, <laughs> to then be fortunate to be able to turn it around, but what happens if I got out just straight after that moment? There's quite a few people, and in India that means a lot, of people whose opinions are, maybe, maybe he's past it, maybe it's time that he moved, maybe it's time that he moves on, he might not have it anymore. So high performance is something that we know intimately, it's always challenging, we're always exposed. Which is the reason why Beyond for me is something that I'm incredibly passionate about and I, bel and I know that there's such a huge role that most important the mental skills, because the technical aspects, everyone is developing those in their own right, but the mental skills are the ones that actually are the glue between everyone's, everyone's skill set that they have. And my vision with Ian and also Jacques is to be able to bring that to the business world, to be able to help the business world with a high performance understanding. And also on the flip side of that, I can really get more of an understanding around exactly the incredible things that especially the HR community um, in business actually do to be able to continue to help all of their staff, all of their employees to be able to actually continue to, to thrive and be healthy from a physical point of view, but most importantly from a mental point of view. So thank you so much for this opportunity to be able to speak today. It really is, as I said at the start, this is an amazing opportunity for me and um, an honour to be able to be here, to be able to be surrounded by something that is incredibly, well, very foreign to me um, in the business world, but also the HR component. Because, as I said in, in cricket, that I know is not done incredibly well. So it really is a privilege to be here today. And um, hope you might have got something out of, out of my speech today. And again, thank you to Esther and the People Matters team for giving me this opportunity to be today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shane. And I'm going to, uh, Shane, if I may request you to be on stage with me. Thank you very much. I gather that I've never had such a crowd listening to me ever. <laughs> so I'm going to keep you, if you don't mind, as, uh, as, I, as I close. You can just be here and, and hold everyone. So I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm so privileged. Let's give Shane a big, big round of applause once again. I think the, the, the authenticity of uh, seeing a learner at the, at the core, somebody who has achieved so much, who's overcome so much, but yet with so much authenticity and so many stories, I think you are a role model for many, many, many people, and we wish you a lot of success in your new venture. A big round of applause once again. Thank you. Great. So I'm going to request you now to focus your attention my side <laughs> and uh, try your very best to do that. Um, there is something I wanted to do, and I haven't done this before, so you'll have to play with